Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. Alright, here's a fairly straightforward Photoshop text project and that's just carving some text into a couple of surfaces. We'll do this one surface here, this granite, and then we'll also do something on some wood as well. Let me just bring that size up a bit. There we go. So, easy way to do this, the first thing you need to do is you need to find the right typeface for this. So, let's take a look at our type. There's our type tool. And it's kind of small. Let me just bring that up to maybe a 72 and then we'll adjust the size. Just call it Rome. And I'll set that at black for right now. Let's adjust the size of our text. Edit, Transform, Scale. And I'll bring that up quite a bit. Now I need to find a good typeface for this. The serif typefaces are not that good. A sans serif works better, a little more realistic. But you want to take a look and just kind of scroll through your typefaces until you find a nice basic sans serif typeface. Now I'm talking about serif or sans serif. That's these little feet things on the text. If it has those little feet, that's a serif typeface. Those are the serifs. If it doesn't have that, let's find an example. Then I like this one. There's no little feet on that. That's a, and down here, those are sans serif typefaces. What I want is a simple kind of blocky sans serif face, preferably relatively bold for a nice look on this. Let's see what we've got. That's not too bad. That Swiss there, I could use that one. And we'll see what else is available. Now some of these have more of a Roman kind of a look, like this Trajan press, kind of a nice Roman look to it. We'll look at that one as well. So we'll do that Trajan. We'll also do this Swiss black. And you'll see the difference on this. Okay, so there we are. And I want to put a bevel and emboss on this thing. So let's go over here to our effects, that little button here, or up on your layer menu, and let's bring up our layer styles. We're going to be doing a bevel and emboss. In here, we want a chisel hard. We want the we want to be down, chisel hard down, inner bevel and then adjust the size like that until it just gets into the center. And you can play with the depth a little bit. And with the size trying to get it so you don't have that curving effect happening in there. Now that's that's pretty close. We can also play around with our contours in here. This will give you a whole different looks. Contours are kind of fun to play with sometimes. There's different effects in there. So we have our contours as well. So there's a a basic carved look. Inner bevel choose OK. Now for this to really work we're going to want to blend this into this rock surface. And I also want to get the, the lighting right. If I have my lighting and say lighting is up here and light comes down this way we're going to be shadowed up here and then highlights around those sides. So let's adjust our lighting angle on this. And that's right here under shading. I'm just going to undo that. And you can actually drag this little point around to get just the right position. And I think that's pretty good. So light is upper left hand corner coming down like that and we get the light down here on that right hand side. Okay, let's now blend this into the background a little bit. We're going to be doing a overlay here, overlay mode, and that blends it in as you can see. So we're getting pretty good. Just our opacity just a little bit. And 
and we're pretty close here. Now we can take this further. That's the general idea. We can take it further though if we actually put our text into the granite, actually use the granite as our text. We have the actual granite surface in there. Now we can do that very easily. I'm going to make a copy of my granite. Let's pull that above here. And we're doing a clipping mask on this. So layer clipping mask. And you can see it right there. If I hide that, you can see that Rome is now in the same text texture rather as the actual image down here. Bring our bevel and emboss back in again, and there we're beginning to see a little more of that actual carved effect happening. Now you can play around with it again using different typefaces and so forth to get different effects on this. You can play around with your effects levels in here. And with the depth settings to try to get just, just the right look on that. There we go. And the final step would then be to put a light source across this. And we can do that across the surface here very quickly with a quick gradient. Gradient tool, black to white. I'll just drag that diagonally down like that. Actually, I want the light at the top. There we go. And we're going to blend that in to the background as well by bringing our opacity down. So it's just a little bit of a shading down here. Okay, let's go back up here to our text and then by bringing this back into our overlay mode we can adjust that or a soft light and a little bit of an opacity setting and begin to have it look as if it's carved into this. Now that we have the basic settings we can play around with the typeface. So let's select our text and let's scroll down and find that Trajan down here. There you go, more of an antique Rome kind of an effect on that one. So once you have the, your basic settings in place, then it's just a matter of going through and you know playing around with the different typefaces available, see which ones you like. Here's a Trajan. Let's see so you have a bold on that be a little bit better. There we go. So a nice kind of chiseled into stone effect. Of course the whole thing is movable as well as you can see right there. You can actually reposition that. Fairly straightforward and the technique is exactly the same on wood. Only real difference is the surface that we're working on. So let's just go ahead and do the same steps here. Now with wood I want a little different typeface again. I'll just grab that one. It has been kind of bold to start off with and let's do wood. We're pretty small right now so let's enlarge that transform scale. Let's bring that up. Now on wood you may want to find kind of an old-fashioned typeface and this you may want to even go for something that has a little bit of a sans serif because of course you can have serif edges in those are serifs right there. You know serif edges in wood carving. It's a little bit easier to carve a serif into wood than it's being hard like stone. So you have more flexibility on the kinds of typeface that you can choose to use if you're working with wood. Don't go for anything you know real fancy like that one there. That's not going to work at all and this is a bit much. But fairly straightforward typeface. Maybe it has a little bit of styling to it would be okay. Here's a playbook, kind of an old-fashioned look on that, and that's that's pretty good. I'm going to bring the size up again on this. Let's transform and scale and scale that up a little bit. So again, the same basic techniques. We're going to be coming in and putting wood into this. So let's copy our background, duplicate that, put that above the wood. There we go. Do a clipping mask on this, and that's up on here on your layer. Clipping mask, there we go. You can see the wood right there. 
Come back down to the wood level and we'll do our layer effects. Layer, layer style, bevel and emboss. And there you can see the effect beginning to happen. I'll do a chisel soft on this one. And then let's begin to play with the depth. It's better if you do down instead of up. But it also depends upon which, you know, where your light source is, where you want to have that light source happening. And it's just a matter of finding the right level in here. You can try it again, you know, playing with the different contours if you want to. It's kind of fun sometimes to get some different effects in there. There's a lot of creative things you can do with that. And I'll put this back to the default setting. There we are. So we're getting pretty close on this one. Choose OK. Now at this point we can go a little bit fancier if you want to. You can actually come in here and do some different modes. I'm just going to use these the mouse wheel here and scroll through these different blending modes. Looks like it's been burned in a little bit right there. Usually the darker ones work out better than the lighter ones on this carving effect. But I'll just go clear through. Yeah, it's all, all the way to the bottom. Let's go clear back up to the top again. There's multiply. And that looks pretty good. It looks like it's actually carved into the wood. The last thing I want to do here again is to put a little bit of a gradient in there. So let's make a new layer and take our gradient like that. I went the wrong direction again. I'll go backwards on that. Little gradient, bring the opacity down. Just kind of darkens it down on the right hand side. Or in this case, I could use a blending mode on this instead. And actually blend this in. You'll see here as I go through, that blends in in different ways, giving me that, that different gradient. Now, some will work and some don't work so well. It will depend upon which one you're using. That's not too bad. Hard light and then an opacity shift. So just a little bit of darkening here, a little bit of lightening up there. And there we go, carved into wood. So as you can see, it's really sticking with the bevel and emboss technique on both of these. And then getting the texture into your letters it looks like it's actually carved into the letters. And that texture is e most easily done by just using your clipping mask and take your actual background, use it as a clipping mask into your text to give you that carved effect. One question I get asked about this technique on doing this engraved effect is will this work on any, any surface, any kind of an image? Sure, you can use the same tools. The Bevel and Boss tools work with any image, of course. The problem is to get the eye to believe that it's actually carved in just so you know the brain believes that the brain wants to feel that it's on a flat surface so that's the only real drawback here as far as putting this onto you know using these techniques on any kind of surface it has to be a surface that the mind naturally believes is a flat surface otherwise it's going to look at the letters as being their own separate item and not part of the background surface you know more like more like that the brain will think of it like that as opposed to thinking of it as being on or carved into a surface. So again, it's really more of an optical illusion than anything else. And it depends upon the brain saying, okay, this must be flat. Therefore, if I'm seeing shading in here, it's either sticking up, bumping up, or carved into the surface. So again, you know, any it'll work on any any you know different surface you want, but the more the mind believes that it's a hard, flat surface, the more likely the mind is going to going to look at this as carved. You can do even more on that to really give that effect if I had an object sitting on here that was casting a shadow. The mind would then see that object with the cast shadow and say, well, that's shadowing there. Therefore, this, you know, the shadow is opposite. Therefore, this must be carved and is casting a shadow inside. So you can trick a mind even further that way by putting something else as a reference to really pull this in and it makes it far more effective if you have a reference item sitting next to this that's actually you know sitting on top of and casting a shadow 
But there you go. That is how to do these different techniques, basically how to use the bevelin emboss and just by reversing the lighting on that to give the effect of being carved into a surface. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.